Hi, I'm Nikki Lee, and today's little movie is about is de dedicated to pregnant women who are wondering about going through labor and delivery. And I would like to dedicate this movie to one woman in particular whose image I will hold in my mind while I make this little movie. Title of the movie is just as it says, How to Help Yourself Through Labor and Delivery. Because you're the one that really has to do it. Everything around you, everyone around you, is designed to serve you. So you can give birth to your baby. Newborn babies are the most amazing, fascinating, splendid little creatures. I have had two. I can say that the time goes too fast, but the very beginning time when you're holding something that's the softest, most amazing creature you've ever seen. Um, the goal of labor and delivery is to give birth to your beautiful baby so you can meet each other after all these months of spending time together in pregnancy. Labor is a time to let go and open so that your baby can come out. You, labor is built in to a woman's operating system. Just as you don't need any instruction to become pregnant or to carry a baby, there's not a whole lot that you need to do to give birth to your baby except to create an environment where everyone around you believes in you and trust the process. And your job is to just let it happen. Some people enjoy childbirth classes, and childbirth classes can certainly be very empowering and educating, especially to the support people around you. If your baby's father is going to be with you in labor, it's probably a good idea for him to take some instruction about birth so he knows what to expect and so that the first birth he sees isn't yours. Um, some childbirth education classes are offered by facilities and their primary design is to teach you how to be a patient in that facility, which might be helpful except that there's a whole lot more to going through labor and giving birth than learning how to be a good patient. So I suggest that you ask your friends for recommendations. There are many childbirth educators that have independent practices that are not associated with any facility, and I would tend to seek those out because they are not bound by the beliefs and attitudes of the facility that employs them. So they have a lot more freedom to teach truth. I know when I was pregnant that I circled the due date on my calendar. But that's kind of a misleading idea because the due date, which is also abbreviated as EDC in your chart, is actually a guess. It's called the estimated date of confinement. So the answer to when will my baby be born is that you don't know. Generally, most babies are born within two weeks before and two weeks after the doctor's guess about when your baby would be born. And that's true for enough people. So you might be able to guess about the month that your baby is born, but as far as guessing the day, it's impossible. It is best to let your baby start the labor. Wait, apparently it's the bit, something about the baby that signals your body that your baby is ready to be out and when your baby starts the labor, you, your body and you are ready to give birth, and your baby is ready to be born. Sometimes practitioners will recommend inducing the labor or starting the labor before your body and your baby have. And this is a very serious intervention and should be done only for the most important medical reasons. For example, if a woman's blood pressure suddenly rises to a dangerous level, that's a really good reason to deliver the baby.
inducing a labor carries so many risks that you want to be sure that it is the absolute best option for you and your baby. For most women, the end of pregnancy is really a nuisance. <laughs> you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you may get more uncomfortable, breathing is a challenge, sleeping comfortably is a challenge, when it's hot out you're very hot because you've got a little furnace inside you. And all of those discomforts are actually a very good thing because they make you look forward to labor. That's part of the natural process. Whoever is with you at your birth, labor and delivery is someone that should care about you very much, someone that should mother you, and someone who is willing to serve you. You and your birth attendants will surrender to the labor. The labor will be whatever it is. And every labor is different for every woman. Actually, every labor is different for every baby. <laughs> and I speak as one who has given birth twice. So the birth attendants are your servants. Your comfort and your um, ability to give birth are their primary concern. Some women hire a professional birth attendant who is called a doula. And here are three different organizations. You can go to their websites and you can find someone in your community who is a very experienced woman who has given birth to her own children, who loves helping mothers and families through labor and delivery. Many times when a first time mother is in labor, she turns to her baby's father and says, do something. And he has no clue what to do because He's never been through it, and he never will be able to go through it. When a woman has an experienced birth attendant with her, that birth attendant will know what needs to be done often without even having to be asked. This is the value of an experienced labor support person. What your birth attendant can do, and you don't have to hire anybody, you might have a sister or a girlfriend, along with your baby's father to be with you in labor. But these are all the different things that your birth attendant can do. They're designed to serve you. So whatever you say is right. Uh, they are to offer you drinks frequently because you might forget to drink. Um, if you want to be touched, they'll touch you. They can have some actual physical skills to help provide comfort to you in labor. They could encourage you to go for a walk, encourage you to change position, wipe your sweat away, sing with you, help you into the tub, basically treat you like a queen. The woman in labor is always right. Your birth attendant is patient. And you can see here, there's a couple of birth attendants that are very comfortably and patiently waiting for this woman's labor to take its own time. And that's a very important feeling that you need to have when you're working with a birth attendant. Birth does not run on a timetable. Labor has its own pattern. And your birth attendant needs to appreciate that. So the big question is, how do you know you're in labor? I remember that question taking up a lot of my thoughts at the end of pregnancy. Your uterus is naturally cramping and releasing throughout your pregnancy. And there's even a name for those type of cramps. They're called Braxton Hicks. And they're kind of uh, a built-in exercise program for your uterus to massage your baby and get, get all of its different muscle layers coordinated. So by the time you go into labor, everything is working well. So what's the difference between the random cramps of the Braxton Hicks and labor? The difference is that you can predict when the next cramp will come. You'll be living your life one day and suddenly you'll notice a strong cramp and you'll stop and you'll think about it and you'll wait and then in 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 minutes there'll be another cramp. Hmm, that's two. And you start watching for a pattern. 
And then it gets to a place where you can predict, oh, I'm going to have one of these in the next few minutes, and you do. That means you're in labor. Well, now the next question is, what kind of labor are you in? There are two kinds of labor. One is practice labor. You have a predictable pattern of cramping that persists for a few hours, or maybe even all night, but then it stops. It might stop after a few hours, it might stop when the sun goes up, and the cramps never seem to get stronger. They occur in a pattern, but they don't, and they don't increase in intensity. Well, that kind of labor is called practice labor. It always used to annoy me when people would call this false labor, because as a pregnant woman, you feel it. It's not false. You're feeling it, and it is a pattern, and it does claim your attention. It just peters out after a while. And it's another way for your baby and your body to get ready for the real event. Real labor, the cramps get stronger, and they don't stop until the baby comes out. Labor has its own pattern. Every labor, as I said before, every labor for every baby is different. But a general rule for most women is that once you realize that you're in a predictable pattern of cramping and the cramping is getting stronger, that will take at most 24 hours. And in some parts of the world, there's a saying that the sun should never set twice on a laboring woman. So figure birthing your baby is going to take about a day. It's important to choose your birthplace. It should be a place where you feel safe, where you feel comfortable to do whatever you want to do. If you want to take all your clothes up, clothes off, and throw up in the corner, that should be fine. And if you want to just curl up on a chair and just rock for hours, that should be, it should be a place where that's fine too. It should also be a place that's private, where there's not a lot of strangers running, coming in and out all the time, because it's very disruptive. A stranger comes into the room bringing different energy, and the laboring woman has to adjust to that. Now, the woman in this picture has made quite a spectacular place for her to be in labor. It looks really beautiful, doesn't it? And what's to stop you from creating a beautiful birthing place for yourself? This could be at home or in your birth center. Or should you choose to deliver in a hospital? Find a way to make your hospital room your special sanctuary. Basically, there are two stages of labor. There's a stage that you can live with. Once you realize the cramps are coming in a predictable pattern, you're in labor. And you can go along like that for a very long time. The second stage is the stage that you really don't enjoy so much. The stage of hard work. When the doorway to the uterus, called the cervix, is opening all the way, and then you have to do work hard and push your baby out. The good news is that the stage of labor that you can live with, the beginning predictable pattern, is the longest stage. It's the easiest stage. And I encourage you to consider staying home for as long as you can during this stage. Of course, there will be an initial excitement, oh my god, I'm in labor, and maybe a desire to rush right off to your birth center or your birthing place. But for many women, especially with the first labor, it just doesn't happen that fast. So once you realize you're in labor, stay home as long as you can. And what do some women do? They bake bread. They organize their photo album. They make some special thing for their, to celebrate their baby's arrival. They keep living their life. If they want to take a nap, they take a nap. If they want to go for a walk, they take a walk. Just keep living your life during this stage. At some point, then, it suddenly becomes impossible 
to do anything else. But when you're in the hard working stage of labor, the cramps send your body important messages to move, to change position, so that you can help your baby move and turn inside you and come out faster. During labor, your baby is helping to get born. Your baby is pushing with its little feet on the inside of your uterus. And your baby is moving its little head, trying to find the opening to work its way out. So if you and your baby can work together, that part of labor could go a little quickly. So I suggest that if you remember to do this, tune into your baby, feel what your baby's doing, connect with your baby inside, and focus on working together. Many times, the hard-working part of labor involves noise. And it's not necessarily a noise that you choose to make with your mouth and your vocal cords. It's the noise that the mouth of your uterus chooses to make to signal a huge change. And I have worked with many women in labor, and I have heard women sing through labor. There was a woman who sang hymns throughout her labor. I've worked with women who have prayed through labor, who have moaned in labor, who have yelled in labor, who have chanted in labor. Some women chant a phrase over and over and over again as a way to cope with the cramps. Remember, the cramps never last for longer than a minute at the most. So once you get into a pattern, you can learn to deal with them. My mantra when I was in labor came to me while I was sitting in the bathtub, and it was strong and open. That was my intention in my labor. Water in labor is magical. So find a way to be in water in labor. If it serves you, if you're comfortable, some women are not comfortable in a whirlpool bath. Most women will enjoy being in a shower. And if a whirlpool bath or a jacuzzi is not available, get in the bathtub. It makes the work of labor much easier for you. Here's a picture of a woman in labor. She looks pretty placid, doesn't she? All the work is going on inside her. And she's being supported in this warm water bath. Your birth attendants will make judgments about your labor, how it, how it progresses and how you are doing. And sometimes people can say things because they get scared. You might be doing fine, but they think this has been going on long enough, or they have some other idea. And as a woman in labor, you're vulnerable to what the people around you say. So how do you know when they are speaking truth as opposed to saying, let's get this done now because the practitioner wants to go home for dinner? And that does happen. So how do you know how to believe someone? Well, first of all, you should have developed a relationship during your pregnancy with this person that you feel comfortable trusting what they say. And when someone says something that resonates in your gut, I would encourage you to believe them. I would also encourage you to give yourself time to find out your style of labor. And when you're in labor, you want to keep eating. And you want to drink water. And you want to walk around and you want to take naps, and you want to keep peeing every couple of hours. Those are all things that will support your body throughout the labor. <coughs> Excuse me. When everyone around you is nervous, you can feel it. When everyone is alarmed, I would believe that. When the time feels right to act to you, I would believe it. As a nurse in hospitals, I've worked in situations where the laboring woman 
has agreed to having a cesarean section and she has to wait because the surgeon is doing something else or the operating room is busy and if it was a necessary cesarean section it would be done instantly it would be done within four minutes there wouldn't be any period of waiting around waiting her turn to go into the operating room so pay attention to what's going on around you and this is where your support person your baby's father your girlfriend your doula, whoever's on your side, can help be an extra set of eyes and ears for you. In between the cramps, you can think and make decisions. And remember, it is so natural to get to a part of labor where you just would do anything to have it be over. If someone came to you and you were 8 centimeters, 80% dilated, and said to you, okay, we're going to cut your head off now, you might agree. So you have to build in support people around you that know when you say, I want every intervention in the book, they can say to you, you're almost finished. This is the normal part of the end of labor when you're anxious to do anything to get this over with. That attitude only comes at the very end of labor. So the people around you should accept that and say, oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that. Your baby's coming real soon. Your intuition is important in labor and as a parent. So how do you develop your intuition? How do you exercise it? You trust your gut, for one thing. You trust your very first reaction, the one that comes up from down low in your body instead of from your brain thinking. You trust your very first reaction, and if it's repeated, if the feeling sustains, trust it. And you want to give yourself the time to see if what people are saying makes sense. If the people around you are acting like it's a true, a true emergency, you will know that without, without a question. If the people around you are wanting to do things because they're making a judgment about you, you're free to disagree and you will feel the difference. Give yourself a chance to know what you want, to know how you feel. You might even need to be alone for a minute to think alone with your support person or your baby's father to have a discussion before deciding to do something else. A really good question to ask of the people around you is, well, what would happen if I didn't do that? Own your power. A woman giving birth is one of the most powerful things on earth life is coming out of your body. Mothers deliver babies. And here's a picture of a mother delivering her own baby. How amazing is that? Everyone else around catches babies. Your midwife will catch your baby, your physician, your, a nurse, your baby's father. A stranger, a total stranger, can catch a baby. Um, a friend of mine had a very fast labor at home, and her six-year-old, her six-year-old son, ended up helping catch the baby. So other people catch; only the mother delivers. This is what I wish for you: exaltation, jubilation, happiness, relief, and joy. I've given you my contact information, and if you have any questions or if there's a way that I can be helpful to you, one of the services I offer is to come be with you after your baby is born and help you with breastfeeding. So let me know if that interests you, and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for this time together.